I didn't even know this machine had 240 capability. There's a switch right there. 120, 240. Cool. All right, let me blow some of the cobwebs out. Well, I'm not an electrician, but that box looks fantastic. I wonder how much use this engine ever got. I mean, it's possible this engine has been restored at some point in its life, but this does not look restored to me. This looks like original wiring and factory wiring, you know? I notice this box is a little bit loose. Let me see if I can fix that. Well, that actually took a little while. The screw that needed to be tightened down uh, was stripped out with a nut below it. So I had to drill that out. And then there's also a rubber bushing below it as sort of a, you know, a shock absorber motor mount kind of a deal. And uh, it had been sort of squished over time. So, so I had to put a new screw and nut in there. And I also had to put a couple of rubber O-rings on top of the bushing to make up that space. But she's good and snug now. These screws on top are just quarter turn. All right, I've got air in the tires. I got new gaskets in the gas cap, so that fits nice and snugly now. I've got the chain mounted to the screw over here. And I got the box uh, secured and tightened. So it's finally time to fire it up and test the generator. So this will be a cold start. We'll see how she does.
All right, generator works. Uh, the voltage knob here does work. You saw me turn the knob to the left and the voltage decreased and you saw me turn the knob to the right and the voltage increased. I think the highest I got the voltage to was about 150 volts. And uh, keep in mind, this is on the 120 setting. And you know what? I never tested the 240. You wanna see if it works? I do. It only take a minute to fire it back up. All right, very cool, the 240 works also. And this generator also came with what I think is the original cover for it. You got some snaps for the pocket there. This is clearly some old uh, heavy duty type canvas. Rope along the bottom to, I guess, cinch it up. And another pocket on this side. Maybe, maybe there's a million bucks in here. Nope. Yeah, it's got a few holes in it, but for, uh, 1967 it's not that bad of course it won't fit now that we got handles on here wait a minute maybe somebody intentionally put these holes in here for the handles you think that's possible I'll be darned. And it still doesn't fit quite right because of the wheels. But I bet you those holes were intentional. So the grips cost me, uh, I think it was $13 for the two grips. But besides the grips, I did not have to buy anything for this project. I had everything I needed here in the shop and it was mostly just all labor. I'd say probably 10 hours of labor total over the course of a few weeks. 1967 Army Generator is back in service. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time.